Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing off what you can do with Superbase Storage now that it has implemented the S3 API. To do so, I'm going to be using one of my favorite tools, DuckDB, a fast and processed analytics database often referred to as the SQLite for analytics. Like Postgres, DuckDB is very extensible, so we can actually query files directly on any S3 compatible object storage, and we can connect directly to any Postgres database. So I'm going to show you how you can connect DuckDB to your Postgres database hosted on Superbase export that database to a Superbase storage bucket, and then query those files, files for further analysis. So let's go ahead and get into it. So here I have a GitHub repository that you can use to follow along. I also provided some handy environments that allow you to spin up everything that you'll need to run. So that way you don't have to bother with managing Python environments. So I'm gonna be using this GitHub code spaces environment. I'm just gonna go ahead and click that button. And then it'll ask me to create a new code space. I'm just gonna go with the defaults. And then this will start spinning up a GitHub code space. So instead of waiting for that to load, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to another code space that I have previously loaded. But you can go ahead and pause the video, wait for yours to load, and then you should be greeted, greeted with a very similar screen that I have here. So I'm going to go ahead and close down the terminal because we won't be needing that for now. And this is actually the same readme that was showing in the, the previous screen here. So we won't need that anymore either. So the first thing we'll actually do is we're going to go ahead and rename our example.env file to just .env, and then we'll go ahead and open that file. Let me zoom in here, and then I'm going to close off that. So here we have all the environment variables that we'll need so that DuckDB can connect to our Postgres database and to our Superbase storage bucket. So let's go ahead and navigate to Superbase project. Here I have a demo project for TTC Analytics, Tyler Tech Corp. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that I already have a database on this project seeded with some sample data that we'll be using to export. So here I have a customer's table, an orders table, and a payments table. And then I'm going to navigate over to storage, and I'm going to create new bucket. I'm going to call this one Postgres, but feel free to call it whatever you'd like. So this is going to be called Postgres, and then I'll hit save. And let that be saved. And then what we'll want to do is we'll want to go to our project settings. We'll go to configuration. We'll do the database one first. And then these connection parameters is what we'll use to copy and paste into those environment variables. So I'll go ahead and grab the host, copy that. And then this is the Postgres host. And then one thing I'm going to do right away too is I'm going to change this bucket URL to the name of the bucket that we just gave it. So we, we called it Postgres. So I'm going to call that Postgres. And then the port is the default one, 5432. Database name, it said Postgres. And then let's go ahead and grab the username, which is this user. Go ahead and copy that. Paste that. And then your password. Hopefully you had that stored in a secure password manager, pan, password manager or secrets manager. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And then now let's go ahead and set up our S3 credentials. So let's go ahead and grab the endpoint URL. So that will be in configuration. We're going to go to storage. And then if you scroll down, you should see the S3 connection. I'm going to copy this endpoint URL. We'll paste that in here. And then something specific for DuckDB is we're going to have to get rid of the HTTPS because DuckDB automatically that adds that onto the endpoint URL for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And then we're going to want to go to the AWS region will be next. So let's go back to Studio, copy that. Paste the region in here, and then we're going to go ahead and grab our, we're going to create our AWS access key ID and secret key. So if we scroll down to S3 credentials here, we can hit new credential, type in my, I'm just going to call this one my test key, like the default said. We'll hit create credential. We'll copy the access key. And then we'll go ahead and copy the secret key. Hit done, and I'm also going to go back to storage. 
Awesome. So that is now done. So the next thing we'll want to do is open up our Superbase Storage DuckDB demo Jupyter Notebook and follow along through the rest of the demo through this notebook. So the first thing that we'll do is if you're not running this on a GitHub code space or a binder environment, like you're running it locally or in a Google Colab notebook, you will need to make sure you have the packages installed. So you can uncomment this line out and install those packages. But since we're running this in a GitHub code space, those packages have been pre-installed for us. Another thing that you'll want to make sure to do as well is make sure that you have the um, Jupyter Notebook kernel selected. So you, it'll, hit, it'll say select kernel, hit select kernel, and then um, make sure you just default to the defaulted environment it tells you to select. So make sure your, your kernel is selected. And then we can go ahead and just step through these commands. So the first one we'll do is just import the necessary um, packages that we needed for this demo. So I'll just import that. And then this load.env file will actually read that .env file that we just set up to load those as environment variables. So I'll go ahead and load that. And then we can call os.env and reference those environment variables and then save them as variables that we can reference throughout our queries later on. So I'll go ahead and run that. And then for DuckDB to speak to our Superbase storage bucket, as of version 0.10, DuckDB has released a secrets manager to help set up those credentials. So we can actually utilize the secret manager, um, secret manager and pass in those um, AWS credentials into DuckDB. So that way when we query or export files to our Superbase storage bucket, it'll have access to do that. So we'll simply use this Python F string functionality to inject these variables into the secret. So we can go ahead and create that. And like I said, DuckDB is an in-process analytics database. So this is all happening with in-process of the Jupyter Notebook here. We don't have any server or file to manage. So that is successful. And then the next thing that we'll do is we'll also attach our Postgres database directly to DuckDB. So to do that, we'll install the Postgres extension and then we'll run this attach command and we'll give our database a name. I'm just gonna call it PostgresDB. So that way when we, we want to query any tables in Postgres, we just um, pre prefix it with PostgresDB and then we can call those tables. So I'll go ahead and run that as well. Awesome, so that was successful. So then the first thing that I'll show you that you can do is you can actually query data directly on your Postgres database. Before I continue though, I do wanna call out, it is probably not ideal to directly run any sort of like data or analytical workloads on your production database that's powering your application. So this would be a great opportunity to check out Superbase read replicas. So that way you have an isolated database that you can run some of these workloads on without taking down, your, you know, or putting unnecessary, um, you know, load on your production database because we don't want to be taking that down. Like, not like I have done that before, you know. Sorry, couple. Anyways, <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and select the customers table here. So I'm just writing a query where I select all the customers. I'm doing some light transformations where I'm concatenating the first and last name to get a full name. And then I'm also using the current date and current timestamp function so that we can know when we're like extracting this data. Um, so I'll go ahead and run that. So I can just call duckdb.sql, pass in that SQL query, and then I'm actually gonna return it as a pandas data frame and call the dot head method. And the data frame is just a nice way to visualize table data within a Jupyter environment. So I'll go ahead and run that. And it's gonna reach out to our Postgres database directly, query that, return those results as a pandas data frame. And then Jupyter has nice functionality where it can visualize um, pandas data frames in this nice table format. So you can see our users here um, and then the loaded at and loaded at um, date as well. So what next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how you can actually utilize that query and then copy it to um, um, copy that data as parquet files into your Superbase storage bucket. So here I'm just using this copy command. I'm passing in the query and then I'm telling it to export the data to our bucket URL. And then I'm, I'm going to give it a folder location of customers. And I'm also going to name this file with a specific date so I know what date this particular like load happened at. And then I'm gonna save it as a parquet file. If you don't know what a parquet file is, parquet file is uh, just another file format similar to CSV, but it's optimized for analytical workloads. So I'll go ahead and run that command. And then we can actually, when it's done running, I'll show you what that looks like on Superbase. So that is now completed. So let's go ahead and navigate to our Superbase storage bucket and click on Postgres. 
and that should load. And now we can see that customers table or that customers directory was created. And then we have our parquet file for April 16th here. So that loaded just great. And then we can go back to our Jupyter notebook and you can do the same thing for CSV. So for CSV, you just um, give the file extension .csv. So I ran that as well. You can see what that looks like. We'll go back to Superbase storage bucket and then we'll refresh this. Go to customers. And now we have the CSV file as well. Okay. Next, you can actually also do partition copies. So if you're loading, uh, you're loading some data and the files are very large, you can actually partition it to make the files a little bit smaller. This can be extremely helpful because there are some file upload limit size sizes on Suebase storage um, based on the plan that you're on. So you can actually use this partition copy to partition on a certain date. A great date to partition on, on is usually like an updated at date or like if you have an orders table, an order date would be a great way to partition on. So we can run this copy command and then we can format it as parquet pass in our partition column. And then I'll go ahead and then run that as well. And I'll show you what that looks like on our Suebase storage bucket. Okay, so that is done. So now you can see here it added this loaded at date equals 24 April 16th, and then data is zero. So yeah, you can partition on certain columns and that can be a great way to lower the, uh, the file size of all the different files that you're writing to your, your bucket. So let's go ahead and continue through the rest of these tables. I'm, uh, I'm not gonna show you what it looks like in the storage, but we'll just go ahead and show you what the data looks like. So this is our orders table. Um, we have the order ID, user ID, order date, order status, loaded at date. We'll go ahead and copy that as a parquet file. And then we'll do the same for payments. And then we'll also export the payments data as well as a parquet file to our Superbase storage bucket. Okay, so now once you have data directly loaded into your Superbase storage bucket, you can also query it with DuckDB. So we can actually just call this read parquet function and pass in our file path and then read those files. And it also supports file globbing patterns. So you can see I'm utilizing this star method here dot parquet. So that way I'm only reading um, files that are named with that um, naming convention. So this way we're not actually gonna query like that CSV file that I loaded or any of those other files. So this way, I can just select the files that I want and you don't have to specify each file individually and it makes it really convenient to query. And then if you want, you can even return the file name as part of the query. So I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. So here we're gonna select from our bucket, the file name and the record count. There's only gonna be one file, but you'll, you'll be able to see how many records are in that file. And then you can see the full file path as well. So that can be a super easy way to query multiple files that have the same schema, but are, um, you know, are their own each individual file. So let's go ahead and use that same read parquet file, but you can actually do like joins on these parquet files together with DuckDB. So I'm going to join all this data together in one completely denormalized table. And I'm going to call that DuckDB.SQL, save it as a data, um, data pandas data frame, but I'm also going to save that data frame as an, um, a variable here so we can refer to it later on. So let's go ahead and run that and see what that data looks like. Okay, so there we go. It's running. Okay, so there we go. So there we have our fully denormalized table here with all the different information from each table. So we have like our customer information, our payment information, and our order information all on one table. So now that we've saved this as an orders data, data frame, we can actually now use this later on without having to go back to our, um, you know, query this, the parquet files directly. So Pan, um, DuckDB has a bunch of different formats that you can return the results as. I've been using the data frame format, but you can use like the fetch all format, which is a typical um, method that you would use for database clients. You can return it as a polars data frame, arrow table, numpy arrays. And then because you can re return them as these formats, it works with a lot of data visualization libraries in Python. So I'll be using Altair, which is based on the Vega Lite library. So I'll show you what that looks like. So here, like I said, I can actually reference this orders DF directly in this query 
referring to this orders data frame that we defined up here. So if we go ahead and run that, what I'm doing here is I'm trunking the order date down to order month and then summing up all the order amount as a sales column. And then we're going to filter out all the orders that were returned. And then we're going to order by the order month. And then we'll, we'll turn a line chart so we can see our sales over month. So let's go ahead and run that. And now you can see here were our monthly sales without the returned orders. And then if we keep scrolling down here, I also want to show another chart here where I group it by month and order status. And then we'll do a bar chart to show you all the different um, amounts by order status as well. So we can see um, you know, the completed orders, return pending, returned. So that way you can see if one month or another month had uh, specifically high increase in returned orders or something like that. So yeah, there's a quick demo on how you can use DuckDB to do some you know, very lightweight data analytics on top of your Postgres database and your Superbase storage bucket. You know, I'm curious to hear from everybody else. What are some S3 tools that you would like to see used on Superbase storage? Um, so yeah, until next time, see ya.